Yo people, I'm Sean from the Net Ninja, and this is Lesson 6 of HTML Basics, Headings and Text. So, in the last lesson, we kind of went into more detail about the head, and how we put everything in there for the browser to give it more information about the web page, and then we went through the body briefly, and we just said that this is everything else that you want the user to see on the browser. So now what we're going to do is dive back into the body tag and play around with text a little bit. See how we can format it in slightly different ways and show it to the user in different ways. So I'll jump back over to brackets. Right, so here I am back in brackets and this is pretty much where we left it last time. I have changed the H1 tag. It now says, welcome to my smelly fish shop because this is what we're selling, right? And then the P tag says, we sell the smelliest fish on the planet. Apart from that, everything else is the same. So, what we'll do first is we'll demonstrate some different H tags. Now, I mentioned earlier, these range all the way from H1 to H5. It could be more, to be honest. I've never needed to use anything beyond a H5. And the H3, H4, and finally a H5. And the way this works is as follows. The H1 is the most important heading text. So if you have a site title at the top of your web page, you'd use a H1. A subtitle for that, maybe for different sections on your web page, you'd use a H2 and so forth. And right down at the bottom of the stack is H5, wanting just a little bit of attention, but it doesn't get much. So that's the least important tag. So let's save this out and have a look in the browser. And remember, we can just right click in the left hand side on the file, show in Explorer and double click our file. And there we go. It looks awfully like a site chart, a site test chart. So this was our original text. And these are all the new H tags. And we can see that the H1 is the most important, H2 second, and so forth. And this H, oh, we've, we've not changed the, uh, the text of that, but it should say this is a H5 tag. And that is the smallest of all of them. It's even smaller than the P tag. Now that's how unimportant this H5 tag is. So there are heading tags. Now what can we do with normal text? Well, I'll jump back into brackets. So here we are back in brackets and to demonstrate what we can do with normal text I'm going to copy this p tag and generally speaking most times that you do text you're going to put the text if it's just generic text within a p tag um, you can pop text outside of a p tag however then it becomes a little harder for you to grab hold of that text in the CSS file and style it to your liking I would always recommend putting text within some kind of tag generally a p1 Okay, so what we're going to do is keep the top P tag exactly the same so we can compare the rest to that. And we're going to embed different tags within the P tags. If you remember, I said you can nest tags within tags. That's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to nest some different tags within the rest of the P tags. So this first one will do a small tag. Copy that and paste it there. And we've just made the word fish here small. So hopefully, when we view this in a browser, that's going to turn the, uh, the fish word pretty small. Uh, the next one up, we'll do mark. And essentially, what the mark tag does is highlight the text. It's exactly the same as if you were studying for an exam and you had a highlighter and you were highlighting some text in a, um, on, a, on a page. This has the same effect. Uh, the third one we'll do will be the sub tag. And the sub tag stands for subscript. So that's going to make the text a little bit smaller and push it down below the normal text line. The next one we'll do is a sub. And by the way, I mentioned that 
brackets has this thing called code code hinting. You noticed I've just pressed the S key. I've not typed the full tag name. And it's come up with a load of different options for me. And I can just choose the sup tag from here. So it's good if you forget which tag you want to use or if you forget the name of the tag. And finally, what we're going to do to demonstrate pre-formatted text is stick the whole sentence within a pre-tag. Okay, so we're going to save that. And actually, I'll do one more thing just to demonstrate this sup ta uh, tag. I'm going to do 10 sup for because what sup stands for is superscript. And that's most efficient when you're doing things like 10 to the power of 4, as you'd see in some kind of mathematical equation. So we've got our normal p tag, then the small one, then the mark, then the subscript, superscript, and then the preformatted tag. So I'm going to save this out and then we'll open this up back in a browser. And we can see we've got our first p tag here, nothing's happened to that. The second p tag here, if you look closely, you can see that the word fish is ever so slightly smaller. Um, we've got the third one, which was the mark tag, very like, very much like a highlighting effect. The fourth one, which is a subscript, has brought the text down below the line. And the fifth one, which is a superscript, has brought the text above the line, very much like the mathematical equations where you see 10 to the power of 4. The last one we did was a pre tag, which stands for pre formatted text. And that has kind of not give the text any browser styles. Okay, and that's because everything that we do in the pre tag, the browser just takes that as is and displays it in the browser. To demonstrate that a little bit more, I'm going to jump back into brackets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a break here after smelliest. So I've pressed the enter key and it's brought fish on the planet to the next line. I'm going to do exactly the same on the first p tag where there's no tags inside, just to demonstrate the difference. So the p tag has no preformatted text in it. Um, the last p tag here has a bit of preformatted text in it where we've gone onto a new line. And that change should show in the browser. So I'll open it up one last time. And we can see that here, the last one we did, it's brought the second part of the sentence onto the next line because I hit enter and I brought it that way on the text editor. The top one has had no effect whatsoever. So that's what a pre-format, uh, pre-tag pre does. You can pre-format the text within the text editor. All right, so what we've done there is we've covered a few different heading tags and a few different ways of formatting text within P tags. So I think now we're well equipped to go into the next lesson and start fleshing out the website a little bit more. So I'll see you guys then.